So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a shell code. So pi main dot pi dash r32 because it's 32 bit and the name of the shell code. And we're gonna go ahead and emulate that. It's so gonna do L. And um, let's go ahead and do verbose mode. And we can go ahead and hit Z to initiate the uh, emulation. Uh, and so I did uh, speed through it a little bit. Uh, we can see the, the CPU calendar, the number of instructions it, it executed. Uh, it has enumerated several different APIs uh, and we can see the different parameter values, URL download to file A, we have the place where it's getting it, the file name, um, page execute read write, and then create process. We're going to uh, cause that download file to then uh, initiate. And then we can see some uh, extracted artifacts, some different files, uh, command line, uh, web interface, and it also notes that this has been self-modifying code uh, is determined by SSDeep. So uh, let's go ahead and also take a look at the disassembly. Uh, we can see our options here. So D will automatically generate it. We can do the lowercase D to see some additional uh, options. Typically, I, I don't use this. I'll just usually hit the big D from uh, the main screen and it'll just go ahead and, and generate the disassembly. One really cool thing that Sharem does is it's able to take the emulation data and to integrate that into the disassembly that's formed. So if we were able to emulate it, then uh, essentially we guarantee that that, that disassembly is fully 100% accurate. We can see that there are some, some, some labels. We have the entry point right there. Uh, and this is the, the decoder stub. So it identifies the end of the decoder stub and everything below this was uh, encoded, but we're able to see the decrypted form. We have our APIs identified, uh, the parameter values, load library, uh, URL download to file A, uh, sleep, delete file A, uh, exit process, uh, some, some PEB features there. So this makes it a lot easier for us to digest what's going on. We also have the API pointers that are uh, enumerated and uh, other data that are is marked correctly. We have our strings. And I've also gone ahead and loaded up the, the emulation log so we can see all CPU instructions that are uh, executed. It's actually better to do it in, in Visual Studio, although I've done it in, in Sublime. Uh, we can see the instructions executed uh, the, the register states uh, before and after. Uh, we have the, the default uh, virtual address uh, for Sharem uh, starting um, with 1, 2, or 12. But if we look to the actual disassembly, then that would just simply map out to 31 right there. So this can allow us to see the rather lengthy uh, journey that a shellcode uh, can take. In this case, because it's an, enc an encoded shellcode, we can see that there are going to be lots of encoding operations that may repeat many times, in this case, 25,000 times. Sharem can also be used for a uh, shellcode uh, that you may find online is ASCII. So let's go ahead and copy that, which I've already done. And then we can go over and paste that into a text file. And then the syntax for that is we are going to provide uh, just the, the address and the dot text. Uh, it does need to have the dot text in order for that to run correctly. Let's go ahead and emulate that. And we see it's a simple message box, pwned. We hope you go and download and try out Sharem, test it with some shell code. And if you like it, uh, by all means, please give the, the GitHub a star. We would also like to acknowledge the NSA for their research grant, which was able to support both myself as well as my co-authors.